We were able to find the total forces acting on a surface by integrating the pressure over that whole surface. We can also find the moments acting on a surface to solve more interesting problems by integrating over the surface in the same sort of way while taking into account the location of the action of the force so that we find out how much of a moment it creates around a particular location. So we're going to look at how to integrate to solve a problem that depends on moments. Now let's consider we had a gate something like this and it's held in place by a fixed hinge down here so it's free to rotate around that hinge and we've got this force applied up here at the top to keep it from falling over this way due to the pressure of the water that's sitting behind the gate. So we've got a free body diagram. We'll have another force potentially down here, but we're going to ignore that for the moment and just concentrate on the moment. Now we know that if this gate isn't moving, then the sum of the moments about any point on that gate must be equal to zero. And we can avoid worrying about the force down here at the hinge by looking at the sum of the moments about that location down at the hinge. So let's take the counterclockwise sum of the moments about the center of that gate A. And let's say that they must be equal to zero for the gate to not be moving. So if the sum of all of those moments is equal to zero, well, one moment is coming from this force. That's the only thing that's keeping this gate from falling over this way. And that force is acting up here at some distance away, H, up from the center of rotation. So there is a counterclockwise moment due to this force of H times F. Now, acting on the other side of this gate, there are pressure forces that are increasing as we go down under the water. So we've got larger and larger pressures as we go down under the water. And if we consider one small region, an incremental area on that gate, then the size of that area times the pressure force that's acting, the pressure that's acting over that area times the radius r out from the air out from the center of rotation is going to define a moment due to the pressure acting on that small area there so we'll wind up with the radius out times the pressure times the incremental area and if we want the entire collection over the whole area then we're going to have to integrate over the area of interest and looking at the directions involved here for counterclockwise moments, this is going to be a negative moment. So somehow we have to figure out how to do this integral area. Well, we're going to need a few things. We need to know what the fluid is. Let's say it's water, so the density is 998 kilograms per cubic meter. And we know that gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. We need to put some dimensions on here. So let's say that H is 0 0.7 meters and that the depth of the water measured up from point A here is 0 0.6 meters. Well, we can now figure out what the pressure is. It's going to be rho G times 0 0.6 down here at A and it's going to be zero gauge up here at the surface. Now I need to define my coordinate system. It might be convenient if my coordinate system was the same as the distance away from the center because that way r will be a really simple function of the coordinate system. So let's define y as starting at the same height as the hinge and going up in a positive direction like that. I'm going to have to be careful then to figure out what my pressure is in terms of y. So let's see as y increases I'm going up in the water, so the pressure is going to decrease. The pressure at y equals 0 is 0 0.6 meters. So I'll have a pressure equal to 0 0.6 at y equals 0 times rho g. It will go down for every increase in y. And so there's an expression for pressure as a function of increasing y dimension 
where y starts here at the hinge. I'll need to know dA. Well, it'll depend on how wide this gate is into the page. So it'll be w times, well, that dimension there, that change in height, that's just dy. So if I want to do the integral r p dA, I know what r is. r is just equal to y. I know what p is. It's 0 0.6 minus y times rho g. And I know that dA is going to have w and dy in it. So I'll wind up with hf equal to, taking this to the other side and losing the negative sign, integral, and I'm going to be going from y equals 0 to y equals 0 0.6, and I need r, that's going to be equal to y. I need p, that's going to be rho g times 0 0.6 minus y. I'm going to need dA, that's going to be w dy. So if I collect the constants outside the integral and take the h across because I want to get this in terms of f, I'd really like to know how large that force is, I'll wind up with f equal to rho g w over h integral from 0 to 0 0.6 of 0 0.6 y y times 0 0.6 minus y squared dy. That's a pretty easy integral to do. I'll wind up then with f equal to rho g w over h. Integrating, this will be 0 0.3 y squared minus 1 third y cubed. Evaluated at y equals 0 and y equals 0 0.6. And if I punch that in, I'll wind up with a force equal to 0 0.036 rho g w over h. If I take w equal to 1 meter into the page for the width, then I know all the things I need to make this calculation. I can plug in h equal to 0.7, g equal to 9.81, rho equal to 998 kilograms per cubic meter. And the answer that will come out is 503.5 and because I did everything consistently in kilogram meter second units that's going to be a force in newtons. So 500 newtons that's quite a force. Do you think you could push hard enough to keep this gate from falling over under the weight of this water even though that water is only about 0.6 meters deep? That would be pretty hard work. So large forces due to pressure acting on surfaces we can use a balance of moments to figure out what force we need in this configuration. And for all of these force on surface type problems, we're going to wind up following the same general approaches to calculate either total forces or total moments acting on the, those surfaces due to the pressure. And we'll expand on that in some additional problems with a little more complex geometry. But the basic ideas are always going to be integrating over the surface to get either the force or the moment acting.